Hey guys, welcome back to another T3 Thursday's Tactical Tip. So today on T3, Yoki Marks is going to give us some alternatives if we're unable to carry our normal concealed carry weapon. Welcome back to Thursday's Tactical Tip. I'm Yoki Marks with Warrior's Edge Armory. Today we're going to take a little step outside of what we've been talking about, which is firearms and how to use them. And we're going to talk about what happens when you can't carry a firearm. Either because you're going into work and your job doesn't allow it, or whatever the case may be. But for some reason, you still want to be able to protect yourself, but you're not able to carry a firearm. What are the options out there? Now, there are probably a million different things that people say you can use to defend yourself. We're just going to talk about a few of them today. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the baton, or the ASP. Now, ASP is, the, is a company that makes collapsible batons. Collapsible batons are a very effective tool to use if you know how to use them. They come in a couple of different sizes and styles. They come everywhere from 16 inch all the way out to 21 to 24 inch. Um, and you can get, this is actually an ASP one, and this is a little 12 inch baton. Like I said, good to be able to use as a defensive tool if you know how to use them. But it actually takes a little bit of, a, of teaching, of instruction, in order to learn how to use them appropriately. I can tell you firsthand that getting hit with a stick or a baton hurts, but it does not guarantee a stop to the fight. So it's important to know how to use them. Yet they can be a very good t uh, tool to use to discourage an attacker. Someone starts coming at you, you open your baton, tell them, get back. That in and of itself may be enough. Another option we have is pepper spray. Now you have the canisters of pepper spray that you can buy at numerous stores um, in your hometown that you twist at the top, point it at the person, push a button, and pepper spray comes out. Having been pepper sprayed both in the military and as a police officer in training, I can tell you that it is very uncomfortable, it hurts, it does not stop a fight. You can fight through pepper spray, it doesn't even take that much. The other thing is, if it is even a little bit windy, chances are your pepper spray that you spray into your attacker is going to blow back and get on you and in your eyes. So it's a consideration. But there are good options out there. This is the Kimber Pepper Blaster. It is a two-charge pepper spray that you hold like it's a firearm. You would push your finger through this little white area and then pull the trigger and you have two shots in here. Good thing about this, travels out of the pepper blaster at 90 miles an hour. Gives you about 13 feet of range, therefore greatly reducing the chance of blowback onto you and increasing the pain onto your attacker. Now, like I said, there are a lot of pepper sprays out there. This is just one of them. For me, this is my go-to pepper spray if someone comes in asking what they should use for pepper spray. By far has the best results. Another option you have are stun guns. Now, a common mistake people make is they think that a stun gun and a taser are the same thing. They're not. A stun gun is an electrical device that when you push the button, you see the electricity arcing between the two points, you place that up against your attacker, and it shocks them. If you've watched any Hollywood movies, TV shows, anything like that, you've probably seen this used. Typically, the result in the movies, you hit them with it on the side of the neck or in the back, and they pass out on the ground and you get to get away. Not how it works in real life. There are pluses and minuses to a stun gun. Minus being, you have to be able to touch them with it. That means you have to be within arm's reach, and if you can touch them, chances are they can touch you. Two, while it is very painful, it is simply pain compliant which means if they can resist the pain, they can continue to fight and attack you. But you do have the Taser. This is the Taser C2. 
This gives you 15 feet of range, put a cartridge on the end, and two prong shootout connected to basically wire, looks a lot like fishing line. The taser actually overloads the nervous system, basically locking up the muscles in the body. It is very, very painful. I have volunteered to be tased too many times probably, and it is very painful. The main thing you feel though, like it feels like your muscles are gonna be ripped off of your bones, but you can't move. It locks you up and you can't move. Like I said, it gives you 15 feet of distance, which is a huge plus to being able to defend yourself. Simply pull back, exposing the button. When the taser is activated, which this one is a non-active model, a laser shoots out so you can see where you're aiming. Push the button, taser will function for 30 seconds. Set the taser on the ground, you leave. If, you're not, if the taser's not there when the police get there, then you have a document in the police report and taser will go ahead and send you a new one. Now, probably my favorite option, yet the one that requires the most training and the most know-how, is the knife. Now, you have a couple of different options when dealing with knives. You have the fixed blade knife, and you have a folding knife. Now, even a spring-assisted folding knife takes a little bit to get open, and typically, the folding knife is carried inside of your pocket. If you don't have a gun, carry your folding knife on your strong side. If you do have a gun on, you're carrying concealed or open carry, you carry your folding knife on your off side or your weak side. Fixed blade is the way to go though. The, the fixed blade knife worn in a sheath either on your belt or even um, within a sticky sheath inside of your pocket so you can reach in and pull. It's already deployed. This is an option that you can use for self-defense. Again, Keep in mind, anytime you're dealing with a knife, it's going to take a level of training in order to use the knife appropriately. Now, we've gone over pepper spray. We've gone over electronic devices like the taser or the stun gun. We've talked a little bit about blunt force objects, the expandable, expandable baton, and finally we've talked about uh, cutting objects, slashing or stabbing objects, such as the knife, also falling into this range would be the tactical pin, which I don't have one with me today, but it is another option that you could use. Keep in mind, just like with a firearm, you need to get training to use it appropriately. Any of the tools we've talked about today, you need to be able to get training and dedicate some time to learning how to use the tool that you need. Whatever it is, get training on it, use situational awareness, and if possible, remove yourself from the situation instead of getting involved with either a knife, taser, pepper spray, baton, etc. Again, I'm Yoki Marks. Have a great week. We'll see you again next week on Thursday's Tactical Tip. Be sure to come back next week. Yoki and I are going to be out at the range actually doing some firing drills. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share it. And you can always subscribe just by finding the bullet and clicking on it. Until next time, take care and be safe.